Good morning. We'll get started in just a moment. And for our participants, I'm putting a link in the chat box that will have links to everything we sort of talk about today. And I'm just going to give a quick brief intro about the library. Um, we thank you for joining us here today and um, hope that this info session will help out. And this info session is being recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel for you to go back to. And then I want to remind everybody that on Wednesday, this Wednesday we'll have the League of Women Voters and this is gonna be a lunchtime session. So come check that out as well. And then we also want to acknowledge that we are on the unceded land of the Ohlone Ramutush family groups and tribal people and acknowledge them as the rightful stewards of the lands in which we reside. SFPL would also like to acknowledge the painful situation our country remains in, uh, in the matter of black lives and police brutality and systemic racism. And we are working in our own organization to end our own systemic racism. Uh, the document with the link that I put in has lots of information about that and some reading lists. The census is wild and nuts and crazy. That's what this slide is about and represents. Please get counted. And from what I've heard, tomorrow is the last day. So please make it count. You matter. Everybody in your neighborhood matters. Everybody who lives in your house matters and counts. Beautiful student art to remind us all to vote. And these are lovely high school students making this art. Uh, deadline to register to vote, October 19th. We are celebrating Viva Latino Heritage Month. Lots of authors, art, poetry. Um, again, lots of art. We have the De Young coming out to talk about their Frida exhibit. Um, Calixto Robles, he's a Mission District artist from Oaxaca. He does some amazing, beautiful art, and this is part of the SF Arts Commission grant. Um, more artists, authors. Again, Calixto Robles will be joining us to do a Day of the Dead in Spanish, and it's kind of a storytelling and history of Day of the Dead. Um, some community organizations, we keep us safe um, about uh, building strong communities and maybe without as much police presence, but um, this is uh, Zach Norris from the Ella Baker Center. It's, uh, do it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so come join us while La Casa is going to talk about domestic violence during pandemic and how uh, communities can help. Dick Evans and Kathy Chen Leong will be talking about their beautiful new book, Chinatown. The photography is gorgeous. And I just found out yesterday it's going to be moderated by Ben Fong Torres from Rolling Stone Magazine. I'm super excited. Uh, we're partnered with the Bay Area Science Fest October 21st through the 25th. We have a few events, but definitely seek them out. Book awards, poetry, our One City One book for the 16th year is Chanel Miller's Know My Name, a beautiful book. Encourage you to check it out. Again, take your census, so important. Today, tomorrow is the last day, although it does keep changing. Our libraries are um, doing curbside pickup and we just expanded four more, which will open in mid-October. So come on and place your books on hold and your materials. Don't forget to wear your mask and don't forget to vote. We wanna thank our friends. And today I want to thank Amanda Chu from the SF Department of Elections, who is going to be with us today to talk about the elections. Amanda, I'm gonna mute and stop my video and you may take it on over. All right, well, thank you for having me here to talk about the November 3rd Consolidated General Election. Several new election laws were passed this year to ensure that every Californian can choose a safe method to participate in the November 3rd election. And these new laws allow for ballots to be mailed to all registered voters, access to the online accessible vote by mail system for all voters, and safe in-person voting opportunities. 
So this presentation starts off with registration qualifications and ways to register to vote. Then we move into your voting options, whether you choose to vote by mail or in person. And lastly, we'll cover your voter information resources, contests on the ballot, and ranked choice voting. So what are registration qualifications and how do you register to vote? To register to vote in California, a person must be a United States citizen, a current resident of California, at least 18 years old on election day, not currently in prison or on parole for a felony conviction, and not currently found mentally incompetent to vote by a court. For many, the easiest way to register to vote is to fill out the online form at registertovote.ca.gov. But if you do prefer to use a paper voter registration form, you can contact us at City Hall or shoot us an email at sfvote at sfgov.org or give us a call at 415-554-4375. And these paper registration forms may be returned to us via mail with no postage required or dropped off in person at our office. So for eligible residents, um, the voter registration deadline or to update your registration online or by mail is October 19th. People can still register to vote after October 19th, but will have to make a trip to the voting center or a polling place to register in person and vote provisionally. So for this reason, we encourage you to register or update your registration information as early as possible. And if you do want to check to see if you're registered to vote in San Francisco, you can do so online at sfelections.org slash voter portal. And you can always contact us at the following phone number or email. The registration steps are slightly different for people in the following special circumstances. Non-citizen voters eligible to vote in the November 3rd school board election, military or overseas voters, unhoused voters, voters with criminal convictions, voters in college and voters who need to remain confidential for personal security reasons. And though we don't go over these in this presentation, you can always learn more at sfelections.org slash registration or by contacting us at sfvote at sfgov.org. So that goes over registration. We'll move on to your voting options, whether you choose to vote by mail or in person. And starting with the voting by mail, like I said earlier, all registered voters in California will receive a vote by mail ballot packet for the November 3rd election. San Francisco will start sending out these vote by mail ballot packets on October 5th, which is tomorrow, Monday. And these vote by mail ballot packets will contain your official ballot, your instructional insert, your official postage paid return envelope, and an I voted sticker. All right. Um, so to ensure the timely delivery of your ballot, we do ask that you confirm the information in your voter record or by contacting us and or visiting voterstatus.sos.ca.gov. And if you do need to update your residential or mailing address, please re-register to vote at registertovote.ca.gov or contact us for a paper form. So this year, all San Francisco voters will have access to the SSFO vote by mail system, which was previously limited to voters with disabilities and military and overseas voters. The accessible vote by mail system allows voters to download and mark a screen readable ballot online and is compatible with many personal assistive devices such as head pointers and zip and puffs. But for security reasons, the system does not transmit or store your votes over the internet. So after marking your ballot, you must print your ballot and return your print ballot printouts by mail or in person. And to access your accessible vote by mail system, you can do so by going to sfelections.org slash access starting October 5th, all the way through election day, 8 p.m. And to access it, you'll just need to input your house number, your zip code, and your date of birth. All right. And for most voters, the easiest way to return your ballot is to use the official postage paid return envelope enclosed with the vote by mail ballot packets that all registered voters will receive early October. You'll want to complete your ballot and place it in the official postage paid return envelope. Complete and sign the envelope, seal it, and drop it off in a USPS mailbox at a polling place or at the City Hall Voting Center. And if you do need a re replacement envelope, you can always request one by contacting us. And this is what we mean by filling out the back of your envelope. You have your signature here, your name and your address, and the date. 
All right. Um, first and foremost, to be counted, you must return your ballot on time. Return envelopes must be postmarked by election day, November 3rd. And if you are returning your envelope via the blue USPS box or whatnot, please check the mail pickup times and make sure that they are picking up on November 3rd. You may also choose to return your ballot in person to any ballot drop-off station or polling place by 8 p.m. on election day. And for drop-off station locations and polling place hours and locations, you can go to sfelections.org slash myvotinglocation. So some important vote by mail tips. We do ask that you remember to sign your signature on the back of the envelope. If the signature on the envelope does not compare to your voter record, the department will not be able to count your ballot unless you provide additional information. So if your signature has changed, please re-register as soon as possible. And your envelope does need to be signed for your vote to be counted. And second, we ask that you return your ballot as early as possible. And again, if you do choose to return it using a blue USPS box, a home letter box, or a business mail drop, please check the mail pickup times. If the last pickup has already occurred on November 3rd, your ballot will be postmarked late and will not be counted if it gets picked up the next day. All right, and you may choose to track the status of your ballot as it moves through printing, assembly, delivery, and counting at sfelections.org slash voter portal or by contacting us. And if you'd like to sign up to receive notifications on the status of your ballot, you can go to wheresmyballot.sos.ca.gov for notifications on where your ballot is in the counting process. And if you have not received your ballot in the mail or if you lose or damage your ballot for any reason, you can contact us or go to sfelections.org slash voter portal to request a replacement ballot. Um, just be mindful to give us about a week to send out a new ballot to you or for it to go through the mail and get to your home. All right, so a vote by mail recap. All registered voters will receive a ballot in the mail several weeks before election day. To vote by mail, simply mark the ballot, place your ballot cards in the postage paid return envelope, sign the envelope, place it in a mailbox or bring it to a ballot drop-off location and track the status of your ballot by contacting us at SF Elections or visiting sfelections.org slash voter portal or sign up for notifications. Voting by mail is pretty easy and you can vote in the leisure of your own home. All right, so we'll now cover your voting options, whether you choose to vote in person at either the San Francisco Voting Center or at a polling place. The City Hall Voting Center will open 29 days prior to election day and will provide services to all city residents who wish to pick up or drop off vote by mail ballots, register to vote before or after the registration deadline, use accessible voting equipment, receive personal assistance from election workers, obtain replacement ballots, or even cast their ballots in, in person. And the City Hall Voting Center will be open on October 5th tomorrow and will be located outside this um, Civic Auditorium at 99 Grove Street between Polk and Larkin. And the City Hall Voting Center hours are as follows, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The two weekends prior to Election Day, October 24th to the 25th and October 31st to November 1st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And on Election Day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the department will still be opening its 588 polling places throughout the city on Election Day, November 3rd. If you do decide to vote at a neighborhood polling place, please make sure to go to your assigned polling place to receive the correct ballot. You may also use the voting location and wait times tools at sfelections.org slash voting location to confirm your assigned polling place address. And this tool will also include the type of facility you'll be going to such as a school or garage or a public library. will include its cross streets and its accessibility information such as the slope at the entrance. And your polling place address will also be printed on the back cover of your voter information pamphlet that you will receive in early October or ha may have already received. Um, so voting provisionally, if you've missed the voter registration deadline of October 19th, you may register to vote conditionally and cast a provisional ballot at the voting center or at your polling place. 
And another reason why you might vote provisionally is if you go to a polling place different from the one you are assigned, you would vote provisionally there, but that ballot may not contain all the contests you are eligible to vote in, meaning you might miss the opportunity to vote, to vote in some contests. So in your language resources, so all voters may choose to mark a bilingual ballot in either English and either Chinese, Spanish, or Filipino. Some voting locations will also have facsimile ballots available in Burmese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, or Vietnamese. And we're doing our best to staff um, all polling stations with bilingual poll workers. So you, voters may always request assistance from a bilingual poll worker at their polling location. And all voters will also have the option to use accessibility resources when they vote in person. They may choose to mark a touch screen or audio format ballot using the ballot marking device, use accessible voting tools such as page magnifiers or pen grips, request assistance from a poll worker, or even request curbside service allowing voters who do not want to or cannot come into a voting facility to vote outside or in their cars. This year, health and safety is a huge priority for everyone. So in compliance with current guidance from local, state, and federal public health officials, the Department of Elections has adopted several new health and safety protocols at all in-person voting facilities. So every voting facility will offer face coverings, hand sanitizers, and gloves to all voters and be set up to facilitate social distancing. All poll workers and election workers will also be assigned to clean and sanitize regularly and to encourage safe voting practices, multilingual notices will be posted both outside and inside all voting facilities to remind voters to follow vital health guidelines, such as wearing facial coverings, hand hygiene, and social distancing. So if you do decide to vote in person, please remember to wear a face covering so that you can protect your community and comply with local law and to make your voting experience faster and safer, you can go to the voting locations and wait times tool at sfelections.org slash myvotinglocation to check wait times at your polling places and at the city hall voting center. So that about wraps up our voting options. Next we'll cover your informational resources where you can learn about candidates and measures on the ballot. So many of you probably already received your voter information guide, which is from the Secretary of State, and it has information on statewide candidates and measures. Um, some of you may have also already received the San Francisco voter information pamphlet, which has information about local candidates and local ballot measures and also includes a sample ballot. But if you'd like to opt out of the paper mailings, you can always get them via email instead and you can do opt out at sfelections.org slash voter portal. So this November 3rd election ballot will list the following contests, President and Vice President of the United States, United States Representative for Districts 12 and 14, California State Senator for District 11, State Assembly Member for District 17 and 19, Barge Board of Directors, District 7 and 9, SF Board of Education, Community College Board, Board of Supervisors for the upper districts, and state and local ballot measures. And in 2002, San Francisco adopted ranked choice voting to fill out most of its local elected local offices, eliminating the need for separate runoff elections by allowing voters to rank candidates in order of preference. So in this upcoming election, San Francisco voters living in odd number supervisorial districts, one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11 will use ranked choice voting to elect members of the Board of Supervisors to represent their districts. And Last year, San Francisco introduced a new voting system, which will allow voters to rank up to 10 candidates in ranked choice voting contests using a grid-like ballot format with the candidates' names listed in rows on the left and rankings in the top going left to right, first to last. And when you mark a ranked choice voting contest, you may mark as few or as many candidates as you like. And this example shows how to rank beach first, for second, ocean third, glacier fourth, and desert fifth. You just wanna fill in the ovals as shown for these five options. Some common ranked choice voting mistakes. When marking a ballot, please make sure not to have ranked the same candidate more than once. 
Ranking the same candidate more than once won't help your favorite candidate because your vote for that candidate can only be counted once. Um, and you also wanna make sure not to give multiple candidates the same ranking or your vote in that rank and later ranks won't count. Um, yeah. And if you do wanna learn more about ranked choice voting, you can practice marking a ballot at elections.org slash practice. And this tool allows any user to practice marking a contest with 10 rankings and also explains how the marked contest would be counted in a real election. And that about concludes our presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Hi, do you prefer questions typed in or is voice okay? Voice is more than welcome. Okay. Please go for it. All right. And I think I'm the only one. I have multiple questions, but I'll be happy to allow anyone else to do it. Uh, first off, thank you so much for this presentation. I really appreciate it. It's extremely you, helpful. Um, That's wonderful. <laughs> well, I, I also work at uh, SFPL Maine, so I want to support these kinds of programs. Um, I have a couple of questions here. This is the first time I've ever heard of doing, um, allowing you to go online to print out a ballot for accessibility mm -hmm. options. Once you print it out, how do you mail it? Do we have an official envelope or will there be instructions? Do we have to pay our own postage? No, so ev since every registered voter will be receiving their vote by mail ballot packets, it will include a return envelope in there and it's all postage paid already. So you'll print out your ballots and you'll just drop it into that envelope, seal it, sign the back or mark it however you choose to and drop it off in the mailbox or drop it off in person at a polling place or voting location. Cool, thank you. Um, did I hear you correctly that you actually will be sending out the ballots starting tomorrow? Yes, some people have actually already received their ballots. Oh, that's neat, okay. Yeah. I'll look forward to that. Yeah. And, and um, you can always track it at sfelections.org slash voter portal. Okay, cool, cool. And um, I like the ranked choice voting. You said it only applied to odd number districts. Is that a test? Are you gonna do even districts then next year or is it, or how does that work? So when you're voting for your supervisorial um, candidates, you, we do alternate between odds and evens. I forget if the evens were, I think you voted on the evens either last year or a few years ago. So it'll be coming up. Okay, and that's that and, and that's standard practice, right? You're just going to alternate every yes, other year. Correct. Okay. Correct. And uh, my last question um, for facsimile ballots that will be available in other languages, is that also available online? That's a good question. It might be, but you might need to recall. I have to check in on that. I'm not too sure. We can always. I can check in on that and let you know if it'll be available online. It should be. When you're, okay. You're talking about when you're using um, the accessible vote by mail system, right? Right, but actually in the printed, it's been a while, but in the printed um, ballot guide, aren't those translated mm -hmm. into multiple languages as well? Yes, the voter guides are translated into multiple languages. They are available upon request, or if you chose one of those voting, option or to receive your informations in another language when you registered to vote. And are those sense. voter guides also available online in different languages? Because um, we have the voter guide in a different language. I probably don't need to see the facsimile ballot. Okay, uh, I think it should be, let me double check right now. It should already be available in Spanish, Chinese and Filipino. It's a question of whether or not- um, I was interested in Vietnamese. Do you have the propositions translated or, or yeah, this, yeah, the city and state. Well, actually San Francisco. So it would be the city propos uh, propositions, right? That would be translated. Yes. I don't know, it's a little slow right now. Uh, it looks like it's currently only available in 
Chinese, Spanish, and Filipino. But if you do want to contact us, we can get you a, a Vietnamese facsimile information pamphlet. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you answering all my questions. Brian, thank you for attending today. Um, what department are you in at the main? I'm so curious. Uh, General Collections, third floor. Oh, all right. It's Anissa from the sixth floor. Oh, hey there, Anissa. I rarely go up there. So maybe that's why we probably probably bump into each other in the elevators. Probably. While back. Thank you for coming today. And I don't see any questions from YouTube, but I have been live tweeting and I've been getting a lot of response. So um, like I said, this is available. I'm going to come back on screen with you, Amanda. So this uh, is available on YouTube and we'll continue to share it out. And we appreciate you being here today. YouTubers, we appreciate you being here today as well. Any last words, Amanda? Um, just thanks for having me. Absolutely. You. Thank you for being here. All right, Thank friends. You. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Brian. Bye.